Hi there, how's it going? My name is Terry Brown. I'm a university lecturer with a degree in mechanical engineering. And in these videos, I'd like to try and help you with your engineering mechanics. So in today's video, uh, I'm just going to go through a typical textbook problem looking at rigid body equilibrium. So drawing free body diagrams, applying your equations of equilibrium and so on. So let's get into the problem. Okay, so uh, this is the problem. Uh, typical of what you'll find in around chapter three to five-ish of a um, typical engineering mechanics static textbook. This comes from uh, Hibbler. I'm not sure which version. Um, and we have here just a, a structural component. Um, so these are, are pretty abstract problems. Really, this is uh, likely to be connected to uh, other parts of a machine or mechanism. Um, it's probably not really a, a thing just on its own. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is typical of what you'll find in your textbook. So at the left hand end here, uh, we see it's supported by a pin connection. So we can read up here. Uh, and also down here at B, we've got uh, a roller connection or a roller support. So that tells us something about how we're going to draw our free body diagram. And the thing that we're asked to find out in this case for the loading shown deport, determine the support reactions, both magnitude and direction uh, at A and B. Okay, so first off, let's have a look at our uh, free body diagram. So our usual plan of attack with these types of problems is to draw your free body diagram. And that means to isolate the body that you're wanting to analyze. Um, and just draw that body. It can be a simple drawing. So as you can see here in mine, it's just, uh, I've just drawn a line um, to represent this structural component. And then we can start adding in our loads as given in the problem. So up here, we've got a 750 Newton load. So I've added that. Note I've also put on my dimensions um, nice and neatly so I can easily see where my forces are acting. Okay. And then next we have uh, 200 Newtons acting at the corner at 20 degrees to the vertical. So that's given in the question. And then at A, point A, so let's um, go here. All right, we're shown some type of a connection here. Okay, in this case, it's a pin connection. So what that means is that this connection can support a force in any direction. Okay, so it's still allowed to rotate, so there's no moment reaction, but this pin here prevents the thing from moving away from point A. Okay, so we can have a force reaction in any direction. And normally what we do there is to represent uh, that force that's in any direction by two components, usually horizontal and vertically, but not always. Okay, so I've drawn those in down here. So we have a vertical component and a horizontal component, and I haven't put the sense of those forces in yet. So we might have a look at uh, what is going on in the problem and try and work out uh, whether we can determine uh, the sense, the correct sense of these forces just by looking at the problem. So if we consider the horizontal forces, the only uh, loading we've got on the problem is um, external loading. It is this uh, angled force here that has a horizontal component. Now this force down here at B, that will also have, um, probably have a horizontal component as well, but don't know yet. Let's, just deal with um, what we've got here. So it's probably a good bet that this force is going to be acting to the right. Uh, and then our vertical component, our other two uh, forces that are acting here are both acting downwards. Okay, so there's a good, good chance that this is gonna be acting upwards. So let's put those in. Okay, so now we need to start naming our, um, our forces, our unknown forces and or moments, our reactions. Okay, because we need those for when we write the equations of equilibrium. All right, so let's give them a name. So we'll call the vertical one uh, RA, so R for reaction force at point A, Y for in the vertical direction. And then we have RAX for the horizontal component. Okay. Uh, some people and some textbooks like to uh, here will just leave out the R and they'll just have AY and AX as the force. That, that's, that's okay. Um, but I, I tend to prefer to, uh, if I'm talking about a force, 
call it either R or F or T, it's a tension and so on. Okay, so next, if we look down at um, this connection here at point B, um, we've got this surface here at 30 degrees. Okay, so we put that reference on our free body diagram. Right. And this is a roller support. Okay, so what that tells us is that it's free to move up and down that incline at 30 degrees, but it can't move into the incline. Okay, so here, our reaction force is only going to be a reaction force normal to the surface. Right? We won't have any reaction force tangent or parallel to the surface. Okay, because we're assuming that the friction is negligible. Okay, so we can put that in, and we've also noted there that, uh, that that force will be acting 30 degrees to the vertical. Okay, so we can just see that from simply rotating this around right, this line here. If we rotate that, rotate that around 90 degrees, then that will rotate to here. So that gives us our 30 for that force. Um, all right, so I just pressed the button too soon. Uh, what we could have done here is to work out the the sign. Uh, sorry, the um, the sense of this force. All right, so let's just go back um, a second and take that off. All right, so if we're at this point, we can again look at our problem and try and see whether we can determine whether the sense will be acting up or acting down to the right. Uh, so we look here. So if we imagine that we take moments about point A, so we're thinking ahead of uh, how we're going to solve this problem. Uh, if we take moments about point A, then this force is going to tend to rotate this thing clockwise about point A. This force here is also going to tend to rotate the component clockwise about point A. So therefore, this force here will need to cause an anti-clockwise moment. Okay? So therefore, this will have to be acting up to the left. So we can put that back on. And we give it a name. Uh, label it R subscript B, so we can refer to that in our equation. Okay, so replacing, uh, just repeating uh, on the next page, um, so I can add all my equations in. Uh, I've just redrawn that free body diagram there. Okay, so first thing we want to do, is, let me just go back a step, right, is to think about what we're going to use to solve this problem. So if we look at our Free body diagram here, we've got one, un one unknown reaction RB and another RAX and another RAY. So we've got three unknowns. Okay, so uh, we need three equations to solve for all those three unknowns. So usually you have uh, some of the forces in the horizontal direction or in the X direction, some of the forces in the Y direction or vertical direction, and uh, some of the moments equal zero. So we can choose whichever uh, equation we want to use first. And usually it's best to, to use the moment equation first, because what often happens is that we can eliminate two of our unknowns from the equation straight away. And all we do end up doing is solving one equation with one unknown three times, okay? Uh, and then we don't really have to worry too much about you know, numbering our equations and substituting from equation one and so on. Right? So if we think about it a little bit before we get started, we can uh, make our solution a bit more efficient. So if we look at our problem here, if we take moments about point A in this case, the moment effect of RAY will be zero because it passes through point A. The moment effect of RAX will be zero because it passes through point A. So then if we take moments about point A, the only thing, the only unknown that we'll have in the equation will be RB and we can solve for that straight away. All right, so let's do that. Okay, so we write some of the moments and we need to indicate which way we're taking as clockwise, sorry, which is positive, clockwise or anti-clockwise, and we need to indicate which point we're taking moments about. So uh, first of all, we need to indicate in our solution um, where we're taking moments about. Now, it might seem like a little thing, um, putting this little A here, but it's really important because if you don't put that there, nobody knows what you're doing when they read your solution, okay? So effectively, if you write your solution and don't put that A there, 
you've got it wrong. Right? Um, because people can't tell what you're doing. All right, so that's that. And we also put in anti-clockwise, in this case, as positive. So usually if I have an X to the right and Y vertically upwards, uh, I'll take anti-clockwise as positive because that's the, the strictly correct um, sense of a moment for that coordinate system. Um, if you choose clockwise, it doesn't matter in a 2D problem. Uh, you can, the, the, the choice is free. Uh, okay, what's next? Okay, so that will be all equal to zero because it's in equilibrium. Okay, so that gives us uh, the equilibrium equation for moments that we can use. And now we can start entering in our data from our free body diagram. Okay, so up here we've got a 750 Newton force. What's its moment effect about point A? So you remember that the moment is force times perpendicular distance. So the perpendicular distance uh, between the line of action of the force and the point at which we're taking moments about here in this case is 0.3. So we can add that in times 0.3. And will this be a clockwise moment or an anti-clockwise moment? Okay, so we've got our pin over here, or well, doesn't matter if the pin's there or not, if we're taking moments about point A, this will tend to rotate around this way. Right? So that's clockwise, right? clockwise around this way. So that, according to our sign convention, is negative. All right, so let's go to the next one. So we have the vertical component up here of our 200 Newton force. Okay, so we've got 200 Newtons. The vertical component of that is 200 cos 20. Its perpendicular distance will be 0.3 plus 0.3. So we can put that in. Will it be clockwise or anti-clockwise and therefore negative or positive. So again, we've got a force acting down, same as the 750, tend to rotate this thing clockwise. So therefore that one will also be negative. All right, next up we have the force down here, RB. Now we could try and work out the perpendicular distance between the line of action of this force and point A, but there's a bit of tricky trigonometry and geometry work to do there. So usually what's easier is to find the, um, the horizontal and vertical components. Uh, and in this case, if we do that, our perpendicular distances are already given to us. Okay, so if we get the vertical component, then um, as we had up here, the perpendicular distance will be 0.6. Right, so let's see what I've got here. So I've already written down here, in my equation, RB cos 30. So that will be the vertical component. So that will be times 0.6. Now, is this a positive moment or a negative moment? Okay, so if you've got the force acting upwards, it will tend to rotate this about point A in an anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so that one positive. So we can put positive out the front. Right, we also have the horizontal component of this force RB to deal with, okay? So that will be RB sine 30 degrees. Okay, now if you're not sure about um, the finding the horizontal and vertical components, you probably need to go back and look at some of my other videos where I, I go through that in more detail. Uh, but by now, by the time you're doing these sorts of problems, you should be able to do this pretty quickly. All right, so uh, this will be RB sine 30. So that will be acting right to left at point B. So its perpendicular distance is 0.2, okay? So times 0.2, will it be positive or negative? Let's have a look. Okay, so our horizontal component, in fact, I might just draw those in um, for you just while we're here. Um, Okay, so that's our horizontal component. And that's our vertical component. Yeah. So looking at this horizontal component now, perpendicular distance 0.2, it will tend to rotate clockwise about 0.8. Okay, so that's going to be negative. So we can put that in the equation. 
All right, uh, so now we've got our equation here. So one equation, one unknown, we just need to do some very simple algebra uh, to isolate RB and solve for RB. So we can do that calculation. RB in this case should be 804.9 newtons. Okay, so next up, uh, we can do some of the forces. It doesn't really matter which one you do, they are, which one you do first, some of the forces in the horizontal or some of the direction or some of the forces in the vertical direction. Now let's see what I did here. So some of the forces in the vertical direction I do first. So now we can just go through uh, and write our equation of equilibrium. I probably work from left to right, but let's have a look here. So RAY, so up in our free body diagram here, we've got RAY acting vertically upwards, so that's positive. And then we've got our 750 applied load acting downwards, so that's negative. And we've got the vertical component of the 200 Newton force here, so 200 cos 20 acting downwards, so that's a negative one as well. And then down here, we've got the vertical component of RB, so that'll be RB cos 30, and that will be acting upwards, so that will be positive. We can put that in. And that's all of our vertical forces. So we can put that equal to zero. And once again, uh, we've got one unknown, RAY, because we've already calculated RB uh, up here. Okay, so let's put that in. Do the calculations, 240.8 newtons. Okay, so next up, do this, uh, some of the forces in the horizontal direction or in the x direction. Okay, so indicate, um, so again, note in both of these equations, I've indicated what the positive direction is. So it's important to make absolutely clear and explicit what you're assuming is positive and as before, where you're taking moments. Okay, so uh, we've done that. And again, I'll probably just work from left to right. So uh, yeah, so we have RAX over here acting left to right. So according to um, what we've defined here is positive, that's a positive force. And our other one here is our 200 um, horizontal component. So that will be 200 sine 20, right? And that will be acting from right to left, okay? So that will be negative. And then we'll have also the horizontal component of RB. Right? So that will also be from right to left. Okay, so that will also be negative. And no other horizontal components, so that's all equal to zero. Uh, again, uh, only one unknown, RAX, because we can substitute RB from uh, having found it down here before. So do the sums in your calculator and you get RAX equals 470.9. Okay, our resultant, so we wanted to find the magnitude and direction of, of the force. Uh, so RA, we need to do square root of the sum of the squares, so using Pythagoras theorem. And I'm sure you can do that easily enough in your calculator, and we get RA equals 529 newtons. So to work out our direction, um, so uh, we got, positive, whoops, do that. We've got a positive value for RAX and a positive value for RAY, which indicates that we uh, guessed or um, made a, an informed or educated um, guess about the sense of these forces. Uh, if we had have uh, got that wrong, then our numbers here would have come out negative. Okay, so if in our free body diagram we had have drawn RAY acting downwards, in our calculations here we should have, get, uh, should have gotten RAY as negative. Okay, and that would just indicate that we, on our free body diagram, shown it acting in the, the wrong sense. Okay, so over here I've just drawn a little um, graphic just to show the direction of the resultant and indicating the, the angle that I'm calculating. Okay, so um, using the trigonometry, right, we know that tan of an angle is equal to the opposite over the, the adjacent, so we just need to inverse that equation. So the angle here, theta, is equal to the inverse of the opposite over adjacent. So in this case, 
if this is our angle here, the opposite side would be RAY and the adjacent side will be RAX. Okay, so we can um, put our values that we found before into this equation and calculate theta equals 27.1 degrees. All right, so now summing up our final answers. So you should always round your answers to around th to, to three significant figures, uh, unless you've got good justification to do otherwise. Uh, because most of the input data, you're not gonna get know to any better than three significant figures. Um, so therefore your answer is not gonna be any better than three significant figures. In fact, probably only two. Uh, but it just, just depends on how well you know what your input data is. Okay, so RA uh, was 529 uh, acting at 27 degrees to the horizontal. And RB equals 805 newtons. And we know that that's um, acting at 30 degrees to the vertical. Okay, because that was smooth surface that the roller was sitting on. Okay, whenever we do any calculations like this, we should always think about and check our answers. Okay, so I've uh, just quickly redrawn here our free body diagram. Okay, I'll just jump straight to there, just for reference. So you don't have to redraw all of this. I've just got it on my next page so you can see it without skipping backwards and forwards. Okay, so we had RAX was 470.9 and RAY was 240.8. So if we now do, let's say one way we could check is to take moments about point B, okay? Um, and put those numbers back into our equation. Okay, so doing that, right, we should get it equal to zero. So we have a little bit of a, a round off error in here. So what we're doing is simply, because we use some of the moments uh, um, about A to calculate RB, and then RA, Y and RAX using some of the force equals zero equation, we're just putting in our numbers back into um, a different equation, taking moments about point B here, right, to just check that when we put in these values, we do actually get zero, okay? If we've got something very, very different to zero, then we know we've done something wrong. Okay, so these checks don't necessarily tell you that you've got the answer correct, um, but what it will do is tell you if you've got it wrong, uh, if you have got it wrong, okay? All right, so I won't go um, through that. You can look through that equation uh, and revise your moments um, from that. Have I done any more checking? No, that's it. Um, so that's my, my check in this case. I can do more, but um, I'll keep this video as relatively short, and in some of my other videos, uh, I, I use different ways of checking. So I hope that was uh, helpful to you, and um, please make use of some of my other videos uh, if you need further help. Bye for now.